it didn't seem feasible. A single player game with multiplayer functionality enabled through modding? But we've been proven wrong with the uh, Just Cause 2 and 3 multiplayer mods, even a multiplayer mod for Skyrim and Stardew Valley. I wanted to make a video on how one does that. How does one create a multiplayer mod? I'm gonna be really making it simple. There won't be any programming or, or, or hacking going on in this video. So I've made a simple graph that explains the basics of how this would work. So you have your game and this is going to be uh, for if it's a computer game or a game that can be run on a computer such as Breath of the Wild using an emulator or Just Cause 2, 3, any game that runs on the computer. So you have your game and your game is an executable file which means it's written in assembly a language computers can understand, machine code. Um, this is very hard to, to read, especially if you know nothing in assembly. I, I know a bit, but not enough to, to, you know, breeze through it. And it's not something you humans should normally have to do, as these programs are first written in something like uh, C++ or, or, or Java and that are then converted to assembly. Um, but we've seen uh, one thing that a lot of games have, and this is a trainer. Now these trainers are attached to the game's um, execution and can take certain data at, at certain addresses uh, and find pointers uh, or are, are they know the pointers uh, to um, certain variables such as the health or the position and even knows how to execute some some functions within the code and this allows you to have something like your GTA uh, trainer where you can spawn any vehicle in any color and modify it however you want and change the player model and set your position you know you just gotta find all the values and that would be step one making a trainer, making or finding the source code to a trainer. This will allow you to, to uh, have all the addresses all in one neat pack that you can access through C++, let's say. So if you make your trainer in C++, you can uh, make it into a, a singular class that's attached to, to your game. So you have your trainer, and it's attached to your game, and your trainer knows, let's say, position, rotation, uh, and the model of your character in the game. So you can then set these uh, parameters uh, true either like maybe a mod menu or something, but we want a secondary application to run these commands instead of having them done manually. So let's say for instance now we have a client that uh, that includes the trainer and can access all the trainer's functionality. This client can then do things such as get the player's position and receive other players positions. So we'll also have the server so now the client has a position, let's say XYZ, and a rotation, and it sends all this data to the server. And this is just like normal client server thing, things being done. This is all C++, it's easy if you already know the, how to program. So the client sends the information to the server, and the server can then send all this information back to um, all the other uh, players, all the other clients that are connected. And let's say there, that you contain an ID as well, the client has an ID. If it's an ID, that uh, that ID can then be 
uh, associated to certain uh, data so that if uh, let's say you just spawned in well then all the other people all the other clients connected to the server will receive that there's a new player that was connected and their client will tell the trainer to spawn a player at that coordinate with a certain rotation and a certain uh, uh, model and the trainer can then access these values to the game and then the game spawns them uh, just as you would expect and that would be the base of how this works every uh, every few frames you can maybe send something like the velocity of the player or, or the position but yeah it would be just like making any other multiplayer uh, functionality to to your game the only hard part would be making the trainer because you need to, to find the data within the game using something like cheat engine or uh, I don't know actually looking through it in assembly seeing what accesses certain values you know the hacking part and what's cool is that the client and the server can stay relatively the same and uh, you can make different trainers for different games and easily make a um, multiplayer mod for any game but that's you know of course if you can find all the values you need so it's just like making any ordinary trainer if you can make a trainer the multiplayer mod in the bag I'm gonna explain a bit how, let's say, for Breath of the Wild, how do the how do you spawn someone? How how do you set their position? Well, how a lot of these uh, other people have done it, and hold on, how a lot of other people uh, synced up other players. Because what's a player? Is that they don't spawn another player. They spawn a non-playable character. This NPC can be uh, then uh, all its values can be accessible, uh, so its position, rotation, model, and then they can set it to to like the player, or, or if it's customizable, they can maybe send all the armor that he's wearing. That would be uh, the simplest way to explain it. So let's say here, I have uh, Breath of the Wild here running uh, with Simu, and I can. Uh, launch cheat engine and attach it to Simu so here I have uh, Breath of the Wild and uh, I haven't uh, actually even really played this game too much I'm still in the starting area and uh, I already have like all the cool you know stuff and I look just like Lincoln and it's cool um, the the way you could find certain values so let's say here if I were to take the bow right so I have a bow when I hold down the button to, to equip it or start shooting it you can see an arrow has spawned the arrows there are on his back aren't actually taken out of the pouch so that arrow just spawned in and as I shoot it uh, you know it, it lands and another one is is put in its place so what if I were to find out that spawn function well I can maybe start finding uh, anything that uh, accesses the arrow and scan that Oh, sorry, I'm looking for a string. Let's go with that. So we have a normal arrow. Um, and I found this website, which is uh, pretty useful. And it has, uh, has all the different items that, uh, that exist in, uh, in Zelda. So uh, they give you a map, and on the right, any second, you'll have a whole list of all the uh, objects uh, in Breath of the Wild, and they even show you where. But what's cool is they also give you uh, the data type. So then if I wanted to, I could spawn uh, an NPC. I'll just search here for an NPC. And you can see 
here's a bunch of NPCs. So let's say uh, uh, Kara. Let's spawn. Let's spawn Kara. That's NPC Oasis 62, and we can just replace that over here. And that seems to have worked. So now, what I've done is I've replaced the arrow with 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 Kara. It even says Kara. That's pretty cool. Um, it has no image, but that's fine. So now. If I attempt to shoot uh, my uh, my arrow, instead of spawning an arrow, it spawns an unplayable character. So obviously, uh, she's not supposed to be here, but I've spawned her in instead of spawning the arrow. So maybe I could find a function that spawns things in general and configure it to set maybe player 2 doesn't spawn any NPCs while player 1 spawns them all, player 1 being the server. And the server can then tell the client what exactly to spawn and where by detecting when that value is being accessed and you know, so forth and so forth. And then maybe all, imagine all of these could just be players. You know, you just need to figure out how to get their position and uh, keep track of them once you spawn them. And then you could uh, maybe associate them with an ID, that being the client's ID. And then it'd be as simple as one, two, three, send the ID and uh, make that player have that, that NPC have the position of that player with the same ID, the client with the same ID. And that's how you make uh, a multiplayer mod, the basic version of how to make a multiplayer mod. It'd be really cool if everybody could just help each other and find all the values in Breath of the Wild, you know, like a hacking community, to, to, to get all the values of Breath of the Wild and, and find ways to, to, to spawn and keep track of of NPCs you know send uh, set their position and stuff because I think that'd be really cool it, it, we need to make some sort of mega trainer and, and associate all these values and and, and have lists so that we can make a multiplayer mod together. I mean, it is a multiplayer, so why not do it together? But you see, this is just player synchronization. We haven't even gone... I mean, we, we could also do um, NPC synchronization uh, quite simply using the same tactics. But then it's going to have to go down to quest synchronization and then we get into a little more complicated things where it's more specific to this game but I think if we just go here on the starting island get some players and send out their position rotation model and even animation you know so that they don't just hover around that'd be great I think that's what we should all help each other and work towards because it, it would really show what kind of community we can have. Uh, I quite like modding because it's a, a nice mixture of programming and hacking. Although sadly I'm not good at the hacking part and only somewhat good at the programming part. But But I hope this is a good first steps to, to making your multiplayer mod. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.